Hey everyone, let's check out this piece of hand-drawn animation by Sergio Pablos. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. I love Sergio's work. Now let's check out his rough pass. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. Notice how gestural all that drawing is. Here's a rough pass of a shot by James Baxter. <laughs> Creepy little monkey. Will you stop following me? <sighs> who are you? The question is, who are you? In my younger days, I was confused as to why an animator felt the need to make their first passes so rough, especially when they could just draw the finished frames. Then I learned that animation is not just drawing. The art of the animator also lies in understanding poses and movement. Working gesturally, like these drawings here, is the tool that allows you to focus on that. Gesture drawing is a thinking-intensive process more than it is a labor-intensive process. For example, consider the line of action, which is kind of the glue of the entire pose. This pose here is a C-curve, and just within that, there's a lot of potential variety. This pose is also a C-curve. The two C-curves help establish this character's movement thematically. But notice the C-curves are different from pose to pose, which tweaks the body language. This pose is another C-curve, but this curve leads with the chest rather than the head. And of course, that changes the feeling also. The next bit of gestural information I like to observe is the shoulder line. I'll just draw a line for that, and with each one, noting exactly where it crosses the head. It's a bit different on each of these poses. Those differences all modify the body language. I do a similar exercise for the hip line. I use the top of the hips for this. I imagine the two edges of the belt line. I can't see the hips on this one, so I'll take my best guess. So we have this kind of thing. And even though there's no character there at all, my brain can still see poses and movement. From here, we can take a look at the arms. His right arm throughout the shot is composed of C-curves. C-curves tend to be good at communicating a casual gesture. A perfect choice for this character, if you've seen this movie. His left arm, however, is a lot straighter. Straights tend to be good at showing weight, exertion, or tension. In the first pose, he's pushing his body weight up from a seated position. And in the second and third pose, his hand is planted on his hips with a certain firmness. So in this gesture drawing, the first thing I'll do is capture the line of action. It's an S-curve. And because I'm thinking rhythmically, I'll try and feel out the other curves I'm seeing here. This pose has a lot of thrust and tension to it. And you can see where I'm using straights to help communicate that. Putting in the head can help establish proportions. For example, I can take a final guess at where the hips are now in relation to the head also capturing the dramatic difference in angle between the hips and shoulders. Both legs in this pose I feel are good candidates for straighter lines. It helps communicate the weight on her left leg and the extension or thrust of her right leg. Notice the C-curve I'm using for her right hand here to communicate how casually it rests on her body. I've also been putting little X's and marks around. I call that landmarking. I take obvious body parts like the elbow or the knee, and I plot them out in relation to each other. It's a guess though. It represents me taking my first stab at the proportions. See these outside lines here? Don't mistake those for finished contours. They are still very much like lines of action, only for each side of the body or each side of the leg. You can see how Sergio Pablos is doing this too, using flowy lines to give a gestural hint at the final contour. All right, here's a pose with a lot of tension to it, and I'm gonna go right away for the straights in the arms. That, to me, communicates so much of this pose. From there, it's a C-curve line of action down the body. I'll landmark the hip line, which also helps me find the proportions for the feet. From here, I can take a better guess at where the costume is, gesturing in the triangular nature of the skirt, as well as the general location of the wings there. On this one, the line of action captures the legs rather than the whole body. To me, that's the most prominent part of this pose. Then I can build the rhythms and proportions of the body from that. I can't stress enough that these are not contour lines. The key word is rhythm. Rhythm being like the underlying through line or theme that connects every part. A successful gesture drawing, in my opinion, feels like the pose more than it looks like the pose. I really like how Glenn Vilpu approaches the idea of capturing rhythm. Let's take a look at this leg, for example. It's kind of like one line picks up the rhythm from the previous line. So instead of drawing this, it's more like this. That approach really helped me think rhythmically, and it's become a habit now. I want to show you how to use Blender to do a nice little animation study using these principles. But first, let's hear from this video's sponsor. 
This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is the number one online learning platform for creative types. Do you want to learn about film and video production, animation, visual effects, launching your own creative business? Skillshare has got you covered. I'm a teacher on Skillshare. I've got hours and hours of premium classes, understanding how to draw the head and all its facial features, understanding color theory and applying that to your painting, a deep dive into the basics of drawing and developing good art habits, drawing appealing characters with believable facial expressions. I've even got a whole class on how to get started with digital tools. You can download resources from the instructors and celebrate your progress as you learn. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get one month of Skillshare for free. So you've got nothing to lose. Give it a try. It's a great place to learn new skills. Thank you, Skillshare, for supporting my channel. Okay, I'm using Blender 4.1 here, but this tutorial will work in any recent release. Start up a new 2D animation project. This immediately sets up a workspace where we can just start animating. It's just a regular 3D workspace, which means we can put some reference material in there. First, go up to Edit Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab, and make sure you have Import Images as Planes enabled. Flip over from Draw Mode to Object Mode, then go to the Add menu, Image, Images as Planes. I've got some reference animation frames in a folder here. It's the Sergio Pablo shot we saw at the beginning. I'll select the first frame, set it to Shadeless, and hit Import. Now I'll press Numpad 0 to get back into the camera view. With my reference frame selected, I can push G to move it and S to scale it. So I'll just scale it and move it into a place that I like over here. Now, if I scrub the timeline down here, nothing moves because I haven't set that up yet. So click on the materials icon here and switch this setting from single image to image sequence. You'll need to enter how many frames are in your sequence. For me, it's 105 and that's it. Now, when I scrub the timeline, my reference updates. I'll set the timeline down here to end at 105 frames to match my image sequence. Then I can pull this in to reframe the layout of the timeline. And perfect, there's my handy reference that I'll animate alongside. To start animating, click on the stroke object here in the outliner, then go into the modes menu and switch back into draw mode. From here, we're good to go, although you might wanna pick a brush. Those are up here in the corner. I'm just using one of the pencils. Okay, so this is kind of the equivalent of a traditional master study only applied over an animation timeline. We'll be scrubbing through the timeline and referencing specific frames, but we won't just copy Sergio Pablos's drawings. Our goal is to filter these drawings into pure gestures, something even more abstract than Sergio Pablos's rough pass. A single frame should take one to two minutes and then you move on. So there's my first frame done right there. Now you don't have to draw every frame. I'll scrub the timeline here to what I consider to be the next keyframe. That is, where the pose has changed enough to be significant to the story of the shot. Blender creates a new keyframe automatically on the timeline once you start drawing. You can flip frames with the arrow keys, and you can toggle onion skinning with this button here. With gesture drawing, I recommend capturing what you think is the most important relationship of that pose. For me, in these initial poses, it's the relationship between the head and that raised hand. If you plot out the hand first, you can find the elbow from that, and then the arm almost finds itself. You just have to put the right rhythm in there. So that's two frames done. I'll find what I think is the next keyframe here. Probably this pose where he's just starting to lift himself off the chair. Once again, I'm starting with the head and the raised hand, remembering of course to flip frames to make sure the motion is tracking properly. Gesturally in this frame, the pushing arm takes on a new rhythm more straights to help communicate that weight is being applied there. Then I put in the line of action and then some quick rhythms for the outside of the body, just like we saw in the previous gesture drawing examples. Again, notice how in a lot of these drawings, my line of action comes kind of second. I capture the head and hand first and then the line of action. And that's the nice thing about gesture. It's pretty free form. It's a series of ideas and tools that are there when and if you need them. Applying gesture to animation, I think, can accelerate your learning because now you have a solid context to evaluate your gestures within, something that's a bit harder to do with just one pose. In Blender, if you want to edit a frame, switch up here into edit mode, then enable proportional editing here. Now, if you click on an area of your drawing, it'll highlight that particular brushstroke, and that circle there is your radius of influence, which you can change by rolling your mouse wheel. On this pose, I will prioritize the line of action because it is in the process of shifting as the character propels himself forward. 
I've also got the shoulder line in there, and here's rhythms for the arms, landmarking the axis of the hips here. He's standing now, so the hips are suddenly an important part of the gesture. When he was sitting, I didn't really have to deal with the hips that much. They were just planted to the chair. Anyway, notice how this pose really follows that C-curve line of action. On this pose, I'll start with the hand, then work my way back up the arm, through the shoulder line, and into the other arm. A good example of how rhythm is a different consideration than finished contours. From here, I can place the head, and then get the line of action down the body. I love this pose. The head and hand relationship here does a lot. But also this clever straight in the forearm, which Sergio Pablos did, not me. I'm just picking up on it. But I think it effectively communicates a buildup of energy, like he's about to jab that arm out. It's important to note here that this is not a good way to study timing. We haven't had to make a single timing decision. Because of how we set this up, we've just been copying Sergio Pablos's timing verbatim. But we are getting returns in gesture and posing. We are building those skills because we are actively breaking them down from the source material. And here's the result of my study so far. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. So that's looking good. I feel the need to go back over it, not to correct anything, but just to darken some lines, commit a little more to some of the rhythms, maybe even hint at just a couple of shapes, just to get these drawings to a spot where, if this were my animation, I would feel comfortable moving to the next step. I spent maybe 20 minutes on that pass. And this is what I ended up with. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. Officers, um, if I might uh, interject here. Well, I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video.